question is, can intuitions be correct? Can our intuitions ever be correct? And there are circumstances where some individuals' intuitions can be correct. For example, um, uh, emergency room doctors and nurses have been directly trained so that their intuitions are generally correct about common affl afflictions that they see. Those individuals have deliberately trained their intuitions. So they can be correct, but not always. If they see a new event that they haven't been exposed to or haven't been directly trained on, their intuitions might not be correct. Same thing with firefighters. Really any hazard workers will see, will have some deliberate training for their intuitions. But if you haven't been trained and you haven't directly tried to improve your intuitions, they are likely going to be less effective. And we all are overconfident about our intuitions. And I think that's pretty standard. We have our intuitions because we think we're right. That's why they exist. And so it takes type two processing to remember that our intuitions are likely biased, unless it's regarding a field that we have lots of expertise in. Maybe you've done something for the last 15 years and you know a lot about it. And you might have developed good intuitions. But if you haven't, your intuitions are likely insufficient. So here is an example from the book, uh, which is the case where Julie is a current senior at a state university. She read fluently when she was four years old. What is her grade point average in, at the university? What is her GPA? And generally the way that this intuitive process works is we first start with a causal link. We create a story between the evidence, Julie's reading, and the target prediction, her GPA. And there might be no actual connection between that, but we create some story, like maybe her parents were really engaged, and that's why she read early, or maybe she went to a great school, and that's why she read early. We made all of that up in our head. There's no evidence support any of that. The next thing we do is that evidence is evaluated in relationship to the rel relative norm. So we think about people that were smart as kids, and we think about their success as adults. Or vice versa, we think about the smart people we know as adults, and we think, oh yeah, they probably read when they were there early. So we're sort of placing Julie within the relevant norms that we've developed in our mind for individuals who read early. The next thing we do is substitution. So we rank four-year-old reading in some relative proportion in our mind. We might say that people who read at the age of four are in the top 10% of four-year-olds. We might say that. So then we would do substitution. And rather than calculate Julie's GPA, we would say, okay, if kids at four who read are in the top 10%, then Julie's GPA is also probably in the top 10%. We just swapped those two judgments. And then we do a translation where we decide, okay, people who are in the top 10% for their GPA, maybe their GPA would be a 3.8. And that's the sequence of how an intuitive decision happens, but it doesn't happen quite so uh, directly, all of that happens in your mind pretty automatically and easily. You might even not think about those individual steps, but they're happening simultaneously and quickly, and you might come up with 3.8. So what do you do? Is there a way to correct this? And there's um, some different techniques, but I'll illustrate with this example one that was proposed in the book. So we can start with the average GPA, not with what we think about Julie, but what's the average GPA? Let's say for this school it's 2.8. Then we determine a GPA that matches our impressions. We've already figured that out, that's 3.8 for Julie. Next, we estimate the correlation between the evidence and the GPA that we came up with. And let me kind of harken back to the last talk about correlation. So the graph on the top is a perfect correlation, which is a correlation of one. The one on the bottom is a, is a loose relationship between two variables. That's a correlation of 0.5. So I think that the correlation between reading age at four and someone's success when they're 25 might be less loosely correlated than that plot there, so I'm gonna say it's 0.3 for purposes of this example. Okay, so then what we would do is if the correlation is 0.3, we've moved 30% of the distance from the average to match the GPA, 
and that would make the resulting GPA prediction of 3.5. So essentially we're, we're modifying our intuitions with the data that is both the average performance and some information about a correlation. And that's the math if you wanted to do it. You can also just kind of do that in your mind as well. If you have this strong feeling about someone's performance, then just move it slightly closer to the average. Regress your own prediction to the mean. Okay. Correcting your intuitive predictions is a task for system two. Significant effort is required to find the relevant reference category, estimate the baseline prediction, and evaluate the quality of the evidence. All right, summary for that is that uh, correcting intuitions, one way is sort of hedging your subjective evaluations with data. That's a simple way of the math that I just talked about here. But if there is a true decision that you honestly care about getting right, you really could do the math to calculate it more effectively. And I would encourage you to do it for high stakes decisions. Stuff like buying a house, buying a car, picking what place to go to grad school, those types of decisions, you might consider actually doing a calculation. Thank you.